Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. One of the things I really like about reaching financial freedom is being able to share this information with you and help the average individual realize that you can reach financial freedom in 10 years or less, even if you're not starting from the best position. But the best thing is that there's no one right way to do this. There's a right way for you, but there's no one right way. Some of us can start and grow a business to the point where someone else runs the day to day. Some of us use the Trinity study and the 4% rule and invest in stocks until we can live passively. Me, I chose buy and hold real estate, but there is many ways to do this. And recently I was listening to Bigger Pockets Money. I thought I would reach out to Antoinette and see if she would come on here and share her story with you because I want you to understand how many different ways there are to reach financial freedom. So if you could, can you just take a few minutes, Antoinette, tell us when your financial journey started, how you got here and what it's like now. So my financial journey started in high school and we'll come back to that later. I mean, I feel like my financial journey was not a difficult one because it was a choice that I made and it was grounded in my why of achieving freedom. So to me, I felt like it was easy and exciting because I was doing something that I knew was going to change my life uh, from that point on. I, I'm so I love that you said it that way specifically, because one of the things we always do, and I think I get this from bigger pockets, is I try to say investing is actually not complicated. It's very simple. And then I'm really careful to say it's not easy because for most people, it's not easy to save. It's not easy to work on your credit score. It's not easy to find the investments. But I actually love the way you said it. This was easy for me because I saw financial freedom 10 years away. And so that made any challenge that came up easy to deal with because I knew it was just for now, not forever. Absolutely. Absolutely. What was your journey like? What did you choose to invest in? Initially, the journey started off just like pursuing FI, um, trying to maintain good financial principles, you know, being good with credit, saving, trying to do all the things right. I think in halfway through the journey, I realized the power of real estate and found out that I could achieve financial independence through real estate investing at an accelerated rate just by doing that. So I had been invested in my 401k, but it was really the real estate investing that changed the game. It pretty much tracked exactly like that for me. I was trying to max out my 401k to get the tax benefits. And I realized it's not paying me now. I'm not getting appreciation like you get with real estate. I'm not having someone else pay off the debt. And the tax benefits of retirement accounts are nowhere near as good as what they are with real estate. I wanted to be free now. I didn't want to wait until I was 55, 60 and retire early, then I wanted to be free as quickly as possible. And investing in real estate made that possible really in two years of focus. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about this, the, the type of portfolio you have. What, what do your rentals look like? So currently I have uh, I, three key players in the portfolio. So I have my primary home, which is a house hack. So I'm living for free. That's always, that's key. Like em eliminating your expenses is kind of ground level, First step, if you can do that, everything else is easy. And then I have three rental properties. So the first property was the first, my first house hack, which I later moved out of. That operates as two rental units, although it's a single family home. It's designed so that I could offer a roommate situation with enhanced privacy. So it's not a duplex, but it's a single family home that can be used as a split. So it's still in its house hack form. Uh, the second property is also a single family in Miami, something picked up off market that split as well. So I try to make sure that every single family property can bring me at least two streams of rent in one way or another. And the third property that I got last year is also a single family, but that one I was able to get three units out of it. Um, and within each of those rentals, rather than doing 12 month lease, I focus on short term rental or a flexible lease model uh, furnished all inclusive so that I can get, you know, two times market rent. So that's why I can say I'm free with just like three properties. I'm really hoping people are listening because so many times we hear and I could pull up bigger pockets in the last 10 videos. There's I'm 19. I have 80 units. I'm 21. I have 60 units. I'm. I do a lot of videos with two investors who both have over a hundred units. Financial freedom for me happened with seven units. I mean, I'm at 16 now and, and yeah, it gets better. It multiplies. It's great, but I don't have the goal of having a hundred units. 
I don't know if I have the goal of keeping 16. I like better cash flow with less units. And there is this thing I like to call the real estate X factor. The more risk you're willing to take, the more money you're going to make. The more work you're willing to do, the more money you're going to make. So I invest really lazily. I do long-term leases at least one or two years with tenants that I hope stay and I don't have any turnover. But my margins are some, like a fraction of what yours are. The, the version of, that you're doing where you rent by the room or you, or you take a, a value add, like taking a single family, figuring out how to get multiple streams of income from it. There's a YouTube channel called Todd Baldwin. That's what he does. He buys five or six bedroom houses, does by the room. He's a multimillionaire based on that strategy. So it's very effective. Three rental properties don't have to have a job. Like that's the takeaway for everybody. And that's enough, right? So I would get overwhelmed listening to the podcast. Like, oh my God, these people are so young. They're crushing it. They have all these units. What am I doing wrong? Why am I moving so slow? But because my beginnings, my foundation was in the FI component, just making sure that my you know, expenses were low or eliminated all, altogether, not spending unnecessarily. I realized that I didn't need to have all the money. I didn't need that much. I really could. I'm good on 20,000 a year that pays all of my bills. So when I focused on what I needed versus what other people were doing, uh, it was really easy to kind of hone in on a strategy that worked for that. And three is enough. I don't want a big portfolio. And honestly, I don't really want to buy any more properties because then I'm getting closer to having a job when my goal in all of this was to not work. Someday I'm probably going to hire a property manager. But not today. <laughs> um, for now, I'm happy self-managing like you are. I feel a closer relationship with the tenants. I think the cash flow is much better with a smaller number of units that you, especially when you're doing short-term rentals like you are. And you, are, you, are you doing, I think you mentioned you're doing traveling nurses. Yeah. So I'll do short-term rental. So primarily Airbnb and there's seasonality in every market. So there's my high uh, vacation rental season where 90% is coming from Airbnb. Then when we start to trade into the summer, early fall, that drops off. So I could do anything from corporate interns, corporate housing, travel nurses, or just general flexible lease model for a grandma in town to help out with a new baby or um, someone wanting a place to stay temporarily while their house gets remodeled. So it varies. No, I, I can totally get it. I think I'm paying, originally the plan was to pay $5,000 a month while I'm down here doing some scuba. I'm in Cape Coral, Florida, just for a month or two. Um, I got evicted from my first Verbo and now I'm in a better one that they're charging me the same rate for because the owner messed up with the first one. So it's a good market. Um, maybe there's something I can help you with. My sister is a traveling nurse. And a couple of months ago, she educated me on a website where property owners can go to the website to see what traveling nurses are getting paid based on the area and the time of year. Mm. She educated me that she, she's in Ohio right now because this, you know, in the winter, she gets $2,700 a month for housing. In the winter, if she wanted to come to Florida, she would get $700 or $800 a month for housing because all of the nurses want to come here. So in the summer, when the nurses don't want to come here because it's, you know, it's a million degrees, that's the time where you can charge the right rents for those. So if, if you have that access to that, great. If not, I will send you a link to that so you can check what they're currently paying for traveling nurses in your area. That's awesome. We do get them year round, but the kind of summer fall is the higher end, but they seem to be here all the time. So that's been working out really good. You reached financial freedom. You don't have a million units. What is a piece of advice that you would give to somebody who is starting their financial journey today? They could be 20 or 50. They can have debt or no debt. But what's the one thing you think that everybody should be doing to work towards financial freedom? I'm very biased. Hands down, the home you live in will be the reason you work or not. You're going to work every day to pay your biggest bill, and that's your living expense. So if you have the opportunity to purchase a home house hack, you should not be paying your mortgage. Someone else should be paying that mortgage for you or helping. If you can eliminate your biggest expense, your path to financial freedom is that much quicker. I couldn't agree with you more. I've house hacked twice. It is the one reason why work is optional. If, if I was investing in retirement accounts or... In stocks, I would it would have taken millions of dollars invested in stocks to get to the way I am now. Whereas with real estate, it took an investment over 10 years of about $320,000 total. 
in 10 years to make uh, work completely optional. So I agree, we call it the cheat code to wealth, house hacking. Um, a lot of people, when they hear house hacking, they, they sit back and they think, oh, I could never do that because they think I have to have roommates. I mean, it is one version. You can divide a split level house into areas where you never interact with your tenants. You can buy a duplex or a fourplex the way that I did it. You can buy a house with an ADU where the buildings don't even touch, you know, an auxiliary dwelling unit, two houses on one property. Where there's a version that I tried to talk my friend Bill into the other day, where you use your owner occupied low down payment to buy a house that you live in for a year and then do it again and rent out the first house and do it again and rent out that house. My current version of a house hack, I call it a luxury house hack. I'm in one of the best neighborhoods in Orlando. It's I live in a single family home with a detached garage. And on top of the garage, there's an apartment. They have their own entrance. They have their own address. They access the apartment from the alley. I never have to see them. Um, and prior to that, my the first house hack, it was a single family home with an addition on it, but the addition was laid out to exist as a separate suite with its own driveway in the back. So I've never had to share my personal space, but I've always been able to live for free. And I, I, I'm always a little confused when people say they're not willing to do something like that or something like that I did, but they're willing to work 50 to 60 hours a week f until they're 60, you know. More than 40 hours a week for more than 40 years to retire on less than 40% of what they were making doesn't sound as nice as living for free so that you can invest the money and make work optional. Absolutely. I really appreciate you coming on here today to share this with people. If people want to reach out and get a hold of you to ask questions, because I'm sure they're going to have some, I have some more. How can they get a hold of you? Well, I'm new to social media and sharing, so they can find me on, fear, at, on Instagram at fearless and free FI. I also have a website now, fearlessandfreefi.com. So I took some time as I'm out sharing. I want to make sure that I can give back as much as I can. So I've created kind of a four-part course series to teach people exactly how I achieve financial freedom through real estate investing. And it goes from the very beginning with kind of those key budget principles to help set your financial foundation. And then real estate investing, starting with the house hack to help accelerate that path to financial freedom. I think that's awesome. And when you get that course all set together, let's come back and circle back and make a video about that so people can get to it. I wish more people would look for ways to e either get a better financial future or have financial freedom, at least as a goal, uh, especially when we hear statistics of 70% of Americans can't handle a $500 expense without going further into debt. Right. We have to talk about it more. Uh, and the more visible that you and I can be, the better, because I don't know if people recognize that it's a tangible reality, just like with a few strategic choices, you can literally walk away from your job. Some people in less than a year. So. Especially those people that hate their jobs. I, I, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. I, I, I know people who are stuck in jobs they hate but won't even listen to content like this because nobody can hear a word you say until they're ready. I'm hoping that more people are ready. Absolutely. I really want to say thanks for coming on here today. I'm hoping that your information helps somebody, maybe to somebody's. I was so excited to have the opportunity to share with your audience. I'm so excited that I got the opportunity to meet you. So thank you. Awesome. Until my next video. Thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.